Uh, we have a packed agenda. So it's, um, I'm Hussein. Uh, Chris White is on the on the left, maybe. Uh, and uh, he is, uh, so, so he won't be, a, like, he's not here today, but, uh, but I'm here. Um, I'm a, a consultant. I work in uh, sort of the data science space. Um, I, 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 like, I was actually gonna say a big data consultant, but then I also realized that you guys are gonna kick me out if I actually did that, so anyway. Uh, so the task is many things. We, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, abide by this thing. So there's ETL, which is essentially your DAS data frame. There's a large scale machine learning, um, there are other things here as well. Uh, these slides will be posted later. Cool, so why do we care about the GLMs? Um, and for my use cases, I work with a lot of financial services, and uh, so if you have, like if you are applying for a loan or a credit card, uh, you go through this uh, sort of a thing where you have an application process where, uh, where then your, your institution will score your application to, to gauge to credit worthiness. And in the event that you're declined, um, by regulation, you do have to, the bank or, or the institution has to give you decline reasons. And, and the GLM or linear models are very easy to inspect and you can essentially get uh, the decline reasons by just doing a variable uh, sort of additive variable selection at that point. So that's the context around why I care about DAS GLM um, and, and also like sort of the, the linear model class of algorithms. Uh, so there are, there are challenges in the SciPy ecosystem which we are trying to um, sort of you know, uh, remediate here. Uh, so one of the main challenges is that if your data does not sit, uh, fit in your local machine or your memory, um, and then you, are, you may not have uh, many options at that point. Uh, there are alternatives for like Spark and H2O, but, but they're all Java-based. Who cares about them? So that's GLM is, is essentially, essentially trying, to, trying to solve for uh, different types of algorithms um, and, and the logistic regression family as well um, included. So a little bit of theory. So, so that's where like, I would love to have Chris White here, but, uh, but I'm gonna try to do uh, justice with these slides. So convex optimization is, is really the, the, the art of fitting uh, or finding minimas of a, of a, a parabola type of functions, right? And, and, um, and if it's a linear function, you are in most cases, you'll have a, a unique minima. Uh, so like the, the art of finding that is, is, is essentially our, our, our uh, uh, sort of the optimization background. Uh, for DAS GLM, uh, for regularized linear model problems, we, we use something called a uh, proximal operator. And a proximal operator, you can think of it as um, as so this sort of modification of your your step or at each iteration uh, during your, your sort of the gradient descent or or or, or anything like that. Uh, so that is actually a really important point because we use the uh, proximal operations or, or the, the, the operator to, to uh, do the distributed convex optimization parts. Um, ADMM is an example where, where it actually leverages the proximal operator piece. Um, and in this case, what you see here is a generic sort of regularized minimization problem. Um, and ADMM breaks it into uh, this sort of distributed sort of chunk of, of operators which are L2 regularized. So, so in this case, um, they, they, all of the local problems that you're solving are, are L2 regularized. Um, and then uh, there's a Z update step, which, will, which is essentially evaluating this proximal operator. And you're guaranteed uh, the convergence in this sort of framework. So like, like more pictorially, like, um, like if you have a chunk of data somewhere, you, you map this local update function, which is you know, uh, just a L2 regularized problem, which is also analytically solvable. Um, and then you get some betas out of it. You, you do an update um, to get to a place where, uh, where like, you have you know, some type of a constraint around when you, you, you think you have already converged. And you keep on asking your, your, sort of, uh, your, your workers to do things in parallel without ever exchanging this 
data. So the data never moves in this case, or not, not never, but it generally doesn't move, or doesn't have to move. So let's talk a bit about implementation. Um, so you don't need to be a distributed computing expert to implement these types of algorithms, and that's the good news. And you may ask why. Uh, the reason is that um, in this example, this local update is just a generic SciPy you know, minimization solver, um, and you are essentially using DAS delayed uh, sort of interface to map this local update to a chunk of data which may be in a, in a distributed cluster. So that's the, the, the sort of the power of building these very complex distributed um, algorithms on top of task. And it's really easy to do. Uh, so uh, this example is exactly how ADMM works and really the, like it's maybe 80 lines of code uh, for the whole thing. Also, like for, for things where you don't need to explicitly distribute things and, and your, your algorithms may not need to uh, basically have that kind of complexity. So in this example, let's take a Newton's method. Um, in this case, Dask will handle the, the array operations like dot or, or like, like SVD or whatever that may be uh, under the hood. So as an algorithm developer, you are never thinking about uh, that, hey, is it distributed or not? Or, or you know, uh, what's the, the, the optimal chunk sizes and things like that. So it, it is, it is a, a very powerful thing from that perspective. Um, and that's the LM package implements the cycle learn API, which is, which is uh, you know, ubiquitous and, and, and also awesome. Cool, so we're gonna do a demo. Don't hack me. Awesome. Ooh. Cool. So I have a. Sorry. Oh, I am not sharing it. That's even better. All right. That that looks like I am now. Cool. So we have a distributed cluster setup already. Um, it is a nine worker, 36 cores, about 250 gig cluster, and we are going to uh, basically use the New York taxi data. Um, for our example, the model that I'm gonna fit, sorry. Uh, sure, thank you. How's that? And I can also do like some cool things here, I think. All right, so uh, it's a New York taxi data and we're gonna try to predict uh, like if somebody tipped or not. Uh, this model is gonna be shit, so do not worry about like the, the model, it is the, 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 the the actual background things that are, that are actually happening, uh, which are really cool. So on the right-hand side, or, or, or your left side, uh, like, like it's the DAS sort of, uh, the, the bokeh plots around the status of the, the cluster. So we basically load some data into a data frame. This is distributed, and we do some feature engineering. If you want to, it is, you know, the totally on you how you wanna you wanna uh, create the, the training data. So in this case, we'll just uh, look at the head again, and it's basically like three sort of um, features and, and a target, and it's also like pretty balanced, which is very nice uh, for our problem. And then I will I'll, I'll do some splits. So it's like a you know test and train samples, um, and I have already done this step. So my cluster. Uh, basically has this uh, data frame persisted in memory. So hopefully things will be fast for us. And we just, uh, oh, no, it's not, not, not persisted. So now we're gonna actually persist it. Um, and meanwhile, this is happening. It probably takes about a minute or two. Um, if, if there are any questions, I would love to have some. All right. I can. Is there like a reason? Oh, right here. Thank you. Oh yeah. It's very just serene to actually kind of like you know look at that and fall asleep sometimes if you want to. Yeah. So it is uh, showing how your your like like this uh, this uh, uh, CSV files are read 
chunk by chunk and then processed according to my, my, uh, my sort of uh, uh, my code here where I'm, I am piping some filter stuff, I'm also doing a, a target creation and it is doing that chunk by chunk in parallel across eight workers or nine workers that I have. And it will, it will basically show us uh, once it's done. So it should be done in like another, oh, it is kind of cool. So we can actually hopefully look at the head and we can, perfect. Um, and so in this case, I am going to show a logistic regression problem uh, because it's a classification. So we'll, we'll do a fit with ADMM algorithm and it'll be an L1 problem. Uh, I'm gonna restrict uh, it to the three iterations, but in, in the general, you would like it to uh, go until it actually converges. So, so, so my fit will actually not converge here. Cool, so now what's about to happen? So you guys remember the local update comment that I made? So on, on our, on our uh, left side, sort of the task stream, what we see is that this local update is being applied to, to my chunks, uh, one after another, and then it will pause, and that's our sort of Z update, the, the, the proximal update, and it will uh, send back the, the, the new parameters to each of the workers, and then they start, start chugging along. Um, so that's the idea behind ADMM, and in this case, the logistic regression model uh, works out. Uh, I'm sorry, so the question was? Oh, yes. uh, uh, is it like um, uh, all worker processes are working on one uh, f separate file and are taking chunk, um, uh, for example, one by one? Or is it like all processes have, uh, are accessing to uh, different chunks from one file? Yes, yeah, so it would be different chunks from, like, you know, it could be a partition file, it could be one file, but it would have, uh, so like the vast data frame collection will mm -hmm. basically handle that for you. So it will, it will uh, read up the, the CSV files into chunks and persist in the memory. And the so as far as I know, this is only possible when you are uh, kind of having access to parallel I.O. So is it like you, have, uh, you are having a parallel I.O. framework or is it, I, um, I mean, what's the type of the file? Um, is it like a, a CSV file? Because, uh, I mean, as far as I know, it's not possible to have uh, access uh, to the same file through different processes if, the, if doesn't, uh, I mean, support the parallel I.O. Yeah, no, absolutely. So uh, if you want, like, you know, uh, uh, parallel reads, you probably don't want to use CSV, but uh, CSV files, like, they, they, you could read them one by one. And in our case, it is actually already chunked. So it's on a, it's on a, uh, like, a distributed file system. Let's say so all of my CSV files are probably like, in, like, a chunk of hundreds probably. Okay. That's how it is uh, being read. Okay. So... Awesome, so we basically are able to uh, fit our model and it will be interesting at this point to actually look at our task stream and that will take a little bit to, to load. Oh, it actually was pretty fast. So uh, remember we had uh, three iterations. So you basically see if I can zoom in. Ooh, look at this, super fancy. Uh, and can I? Whatever. Uh, so uh, yeah. So like in this case, it is you know doing this one iteration, and it, it has a bunch of local updates. Then it does the proximal operator, so that's the, the white space, and then it will do it through the, the next iteration, and it will keep on going. So that's how we were able to do distributed uh, linear models with Dask pretty easily. It, we have three minutes. We have two minutes, right? Okay. Absolutely. Uh, 
Uh, so it is also, uh, we have a scikit-learn API implemented here as well. So you could do two cool things like pipelines, and Tom is sitting there, so it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work that he actually did there. Uh, so in this case, we'll have the standard scaler, and we will like, essentially create our own transformer, because like, our, the scikit-learn transformers don't know about uh, Dask arrays. Um, and we will be able to fit it in a pipeline, so it will standardize our, our inputs and also do a fit. And in this case, it will take a little bit longer, but, but you guys get the idea around how uh, like, this is very extensible to scikit-learn ecosystem. Going back to my slide, um, and we're gonna wrap up in like next minute. Uh, that's ULM is a very nascent effort, so I would love to like you know see if you guys are are interested in contributing. We have had some activity already, and uh, thank you for everybody who has helped us um, build this. And any questions? Thank you. How big? Yeah, um, so I have run this for on like about half a terabyte, like on, on like. And, and how many machines were you running it on? Uh, how many on the Dask worker side? 400 workers. Whoa, that's big. What are the alternatives? So if you don't have Dask and Dask GLM, like what, what alternatives do you have for half a terabyte and H2O. 400 machines? H2O, H2O actually implements uh, ADMM for their GLM library as well. Um, and then there's a lot of work that has happened on, on Spark as well on, on, on how to do ADMM with Spark. Uh, those are the two main ones that I know of. I'm sure there are others. So, so you know the obvious next question, like why Dask GLM? Because it's Python and it's Dask or because of it's better than H2O or? So it fits into your the current uh, cycle learn based sort of data science workflows, um, and you don't have to do any. Like, you don't have to learn a new tool. Uh, you are essentially still in this like super nice Python ecosystem, and you're writing code that looks like NumPy, but it's uh, it's it's like also distributed, which is really awesome and super cool. Yes, uh, uh, follow, maybe a follow-up question. Did you actually bench this on a very size of data, including in-memory data versus the uh, recent solvers that were added to scikit-learn? I mean, like looking at conversions over time and, and do some extensive, bench, extensive benchmarks? We have done some benchmarks, but we haven't done anything that is worth noting here. Uh, but that would be another, another like, next step. And if you would love to, con if, if you have some time, I, I would love to get that, that type of contribution in. So it looks like ADMM, your ADMM algorithm was using all the gradients. Is this true? All the gradients. From every example in your data set? Yes. So it will uh, like ask like, like each chunk uh, to basically fit a different type of uh, uh, optimization problem. And then it will combine the results. Uh, that's the proximal update right. or shrinkage uh, for, for regression or mm -hmm. resistance regression and then it will, it will essentially, at some point, converge. So, so, does your, so then I'm guessing your gradient descent also looks at all the gradients from every example. So I'm, I'm wondering, um, I've seen some work on stochastic gradient descent that takes just one example and takes that, and takes that gradient. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to see how this looks and how the convergence rates look. Cool, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.